Okay, so you've uh, so we've got a class um, with some variables in it. Some of them are static, and some of them are instance variables. Now the question is, if you don't set them to anything, what uh, what's the default value that they get? And the answer is, the default value is basically zero. As you can see, it depends on the type, and uh, if it's uh, a reference type, so it's like another another uh, it's a reference to a, a type. Um, then it gets none, and you might suspect from this, and I suppose it's probably true that false corresponds to zero, because I suspect what's happening is it's just uh, zero filling a chunk of memory that corresponds to it, and that's the default value. Now, um, uh, local variables, uh, some variables that are in, in uh, declared inside methods, uh, local variables. Now they're not automatically initialized with default values, but uh, the compiler um, is quite clever, and um, if you try and access them before you've set them to any value, it will give a compiler error. Uh, in fact, it will sometimes give a compiler er error even if you do set them, because it's not always capable of working out whether they've been set or not. So it's overprotective in a way. So it isn't possible that in that case to access a variable which has not been initialized. That's not the case in C or C++ where you can quite happily access variables which have not been initialized and you get all sorts of problems. Okay, now in the case of uh, um, these uh, instance variables, um, there are three different ways to initialize them. You can, or you can leave them uninitialized, in which case they get the default value. Uh, you can initialize them with a, an initializer, which is like simply saying int i equals 24, that's an initializer. Because they're constructed and initialized there. You can do it in the constructor itself, so when you create the object you then set values into it. That's perfectly possible. And there's a third method, which uh, people don't use all that much, but it's perfectly possible. In which case, you, you, you use something called an instance initialization block. And uh, that's just a block, that's to say um, a chunk between a left and right curly brackets like that, uh, which uh, sets the variable. And here's an example. We've got uh, something called date here. Uh, it's, uh, if you write this in, this will actually compile um, and run as well. Uh, I'll come to what this import statement does uh, later. Uh, in fact, it allows you to use this thing called Calendar. Uh, calendar is something which is supplied by Java. It's a utility thing which, um, uh, in this case, uh, gets an instance of something object here of type Calendar and uh, if on that object you call this uh, this method here called get time, it uh, creates a date object. And there's some other um, variable being set there. There's an ordinary initializer there. And uh, there's a little procedure which um, creates a new one of these, and uh, which means that this will automatically get run. The date will be set, and um, it writes out what today is. There. And uh, if you try and write out temp, you won't be able to because temp here, being uh, created inside of this block, will vanish at this point here. And uh, that's default initialization and initialization via instance initialization blocks. Now, these are not used very much, um, but they are used occasionally, and there's one or two places later on something called inner classes where they have to be used. 